It turns out the biggest questions facing e-mountain biking is not just such things as battery range, motor, or aesthetics, but much more basic fundamental questions surrounding these type of bikes. Now it's very easy to get carried away with e-mountain biking and all the detail involved with that, such things as the geometry, the amount of battery power you've got, what motor you've got, or indeed what model e-mountain bike you've got. But for newcomers to the sport, there are much more bigger, basic, fundamental questions which need to be answered. Yeah. And Chris, uh, I've, I hear there's a, a, a survey recently been done by Halfords, right? Yeah, Halfords have recently been on it and they've asked quite a few basic questions and actually quite surprising answers to all those things about e-bikes and e-mountain bikes yeah. in general. I guess there's, I guess what we're talking here, there's like, there's the mechanics mm -hmm. of buying an e-mountain bike, but yeah. also there's a the philosophy of mm -hmm. buying an e-mountain bike. And a lot of people, you know, there's the question with the things you see out there, or oh, it's, it's for unfit people, it's for lazy people, well, and so yeah, like that. Exactly. But what we're gonna talk about now, I think, is things that which are more fundamental down to the mechanics mm -hmm. of purchase, yeah. rather than about philosophy, yeah, right? Exactly, yeah. Well, first of all, kicking it off, 65% of people didn't know that you have to still pedal when riding an e-bike. <laughs> Are you surprised with that though? 65 Are you actually surprised about half. that? It's pretty crazy, isn't it? <laughs> well, you see it though. You go, you go down mm -hmm. to trail centres, you yeah. speak to people on the street. Mm -hmm. You know, I spoke to yeah. a guy outside my house yesterday yeah. saying, oh, you just got to turn the throttle. Actually, yeah. no, have you actually ridden an e-mountain bike? Exactly. You don't yeah. just turn the throttle. I quite often get it on the big jumps and stuff I do. They're like, how much boost are you putting into that jump? And I'm like, no, I'm just pedalling and using the weight of the bike. I think it is quite a you know a common one to think that it's just a throttle on there. But then at the same time, there are e-mountain bikes which are throttle assist, yeah, right? Exactly. So, you know, I guess there is an element of truth in what, what, what people's perception is of e-mountain bikes. Definitely. But that's, you know, 65%. Mm -hmm. uh, another interesting stat is this one, is that 41% uh, of people are said to be unsure if they need to license or insure their e-mountain bike. Right. Uh, but again, if you do have an s pedal like bike, which are those bikes which go above 25 mm -hmm. kilometers an hour, or indeed 35 kilometers an hour, which depend on the country you live in, then you do actually do need to insure your bikes and license them. But for the Pedelecs, which are the bikes that we talk about, and in fact the bikes which Halfords sell in their shops, then you don't actually need to do that. Do no, you? I think it's only Northern Ireland over this way they actually need to insure on tax, wear a helmet, things like that on those standard e-bikes. So it is slightly different there, but mm -hmm. that's pretty crazy stats. And then we've got 43% are unsure if e-bikes need to be taxed. So actual tax this to use on the road. No, that's pretty yeah. crazy, nearly half the people it's this crazy, isn't it? But again, it comes down to, uh, you know, these people going into Halford's shops and, and they, they, are, they are very basic questions, really. Yeah. Uh, and then this one, 37% of people think that e-bikes need charging stations. Well, e-bikes do need charging, but they certainly don't need charging the yeah. way you charge Tesla cars or exactly. anything like that. Yeah, it's simply it's exactly the same. It's plugging in your mobile phone, 240 volt plug, bang, straight yeah. in the wall. Connected, uh, Having know. said that, Chris, if you think the likes of Bosch, mm -hmm. they've got now got charging stations in yeah. the Alps, like dozens and dozens of points, mm -hmm. you know, in places surrounding Morsi and Leger and Verbier and places mm -hmm. like that. So, you know, e-bike charging stations are actually coming for people wanting to, say, go for multi-day trips and to uh, rent their e-mountain bike and go from town to town. So yeah. it's, yeah, they, they are out there. And then 84% of people didn't know that e-bikes can be purchased on the Cycle to Work scheme. Now, the Cycle to Work scheme was normally capped at £1,000, but they've recently upped that now. So you can actually buy an e-bike to ride to work on that scheme, which is pretty cool. Mm. What's interesting is that uh, Halfords actually sell uh, a a vast range of e-mountain bikes. Did you know that the, the starter e-mountain bike starts at 398 quid? Actually, Steve, that 398 pound bike isn't a mountain bike. It was kind of like a town shopping bike. Why do you feel then? Yeah, it'd be bang on for doing the <laughs> shopping. But just make sure you're getting the right thing. E-mountain bike and e-bike, there definitely is a big difference. Mm. But back to the survey, we've got loads of other facts for you. 47% uh, think an e-bike would encourage them to ride more. Yeah. 23% think having an e-bike will help them start cycling again. Yeah, I've seen that. 28% think they they aren't fit enough to ride a regular bike. It's a big one, you know, mm. and e-mountain biking is is bringing more people into the sport, mm. which is only a great thing. Two of the stats here, Chris. 9% uh, think you can't ride e-mountain bikes in the rain. I think we've done that before. I we? think we've been there. And 15% uh, of people are scared that they would not have full control over an e-mountain bike, which I guess is quite understandable if you've not ridden one. 
uh, let us know what your car, what your thoughts and your perceptions of e-bikes and e-mountain bikes were before you bought one. Maybe you still haven't bought one. You're about to buy one. There's plenty of videos on the channel to, to yeah. answer all these questions, Chris. Yeah, definitely. Be sure to check out. We've done videos from beginner buying your first e-bike all the way up to like beginner skills. So everything mm -hmm. that you need to know about e-biking is here on the channel. So check them out. Loads of videos. Right, coming up this weekend in Verbier in Switzerland, it's the E-Mountain Bike Festival, and there's gonna be loads going on there, 30 different brands, different events taking place over the weekend. Now, one which I'm really interested in is the Rando Gomond, which is a e-bike tour, taking in all the local uh, hotspots, local food hotspots and stuff like that. I'm not talking kebab houses. I'm talking, talking wine. So like mountain chalets, yeah, a little bit of wine possibly. Uh, there's some grand tours going on around the area on different, uh, different distances. You've got a 30 or 40 or 100K uh, trip. But me and Chris, in a couple of days time, we're taking on the Tour de Mont Blanc, which mm. is 350 kilometers, 40,000 foot of climbing and 60,000 foot of descending. Uh, so we'll be reporting back to you on that, but make sure to get yourselves down to Verbia e-bike festival because it'll be a right laugh. And you'll Chris? be there doing autographs as well, right? Now, last week we had a visit from Marco Sondrega and David from the Specialized Levo HQ in Switzerland. Uh, had a great day riding my local trails. Uh, got back to the pub mm -hmm. and uh, Marco says, oh, crikey, uh, king of the mountain on, on my, my track. Now, I let him out. So I should have maybe put Strava on myself. So you got beaten on your own track, <laughs> someone else then, yeah? yeah? Oh dear, Steve. <laughs> and using Strava for normal mountain bike, you know, e-bike rides? Oh, controversial. Yeah, but subject. it was a downhill track. Uh, don't know about that. People really? get pretty upset about mm. putting e uh, normal rides on uh, e-bikes okay, on Strava. Right. Do you know what? I wasn't aware of that. So, mm -hmm. so there's an e-bike segment, right? Yeah, e-bike section, so you can upload on your I will address Strava. that, I'll you address will? that. But my question to you mm. is, why wouldn't you, like, we were doing over 25Ks anyway, mm -hmm. and um, on a down, down segment, does it actually matter? I get it, mm -hmm. I get it on an uphill section, totally with yeah, you, yeah. but I'm not so sure about downhill. No, I know, I kind of what, upload all mine. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. What do you guys think about Strava downhill on e-bikes? On is, is it game for everybody or not? Now, Steve, one of the questions we get asked here on EMBN is about tires and swapping them from commuting tires to off-road tires. And what should you do? Buy a new wheel set or just swap the tires at the weekends? Well, I think I've actually found a solution to this on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. There's a guy got um, Retire is mm -hmm. the name of the company. Yeah. And basically, these are zip-on tires. <laughs> <laughs> so you can release the tire and change the tire you know, to suit the purpose. Are you can. actually serious? Yeah. That cool, is the most it? ridiculous idea I've ever heard in my life. What? How much they, how much has pledged him? 25 grand? Yeah, 25 grand. They want a 10 what? grand to start it. So it's going to happen. Are I you tell excited? you what, I tell you what, there's far better types of rubber to invest your money in, right? <laughs> but what <laughs> do you think about, tell you that. <laughs> what do you think about the, uh, what do you think about the design though? Zip around the edge of the sidewalk? Chris, let's swiftly move on. It is a ridiculous oh. idea with no application or practical, uh, Practicality. Uh, at all to do with mountain biking. What earth have you actually even got it on the show for? Moving on to the climb of the week, which actually is a climb of the week this mm -hmm. week, and it's from Patrick in uh, Canada, East Coast Canada. This is cool. In uh, Rockwood Park St. John, which is actually one of mm -hmm. the biggest inner city parks in Canada. And you've got to take your hat off to this climb because it's one of the finest climb of the weeks I've actually seen it's on the channel. Tech, isn't it? It's a lovely bit of rock, mm -hmm. uh, great technique, great bike, great dog, Obi, nice dog. bit of sun. Mm -hmm. uh, now this is a, honestly, this is a, is a copy book yeah. climb of the week for you guys to go out and get after. I bet it was way steeper than it looks in this video as well, isn't it? Definitely. There's time for ghetto tech, and this is actually isn't too ghetto. It's actually a really cool top mod. This is in from Chris with his Cube Stereo Action 160. He's got a little trike that he takes his daughter out on for a ride. She's got a genetic disorder and poor balance, so she can't ride a bike herself. And this is e-bike use as prime, isn't it, Steve? Check that yeah, out. Yeah, and, and certainly definitely mm. prime e-bike territory there. That's in Church Stratton. I'm guessing that's up on the Long Mind area, yeah. uh, which is sort of mid Wales between on on the on the border between England and Wales. Uh, yes. Nice cube bike as well, That's actually, cool, Chris. Yeah. 
Okay, following up from last week's shop shout out where Chris had his crinkle cut red top on, this week he's got his faded navy. Or oh, is it blue? What colour is that? Blue. It's nice, I really like that colour. Get in the shop, check him out. Yeah. I think you can do the nipple check. Oh, okay. So we had some interesting feedback on last week's show where we talked about batteries and how they're mounted, internal, external, semi-integrated. Loads of comments from you guys. Let's kick things off, Steve, what we got. Yes, Dr. Jarvis uh, says, external works best for us, means we can have two 500 watt hour batteries used in a day, keep a spare in the van, return for lunch and a battery change. One minute changeover and no need to carry anything with you. You really don't want to hit steep enduro trails with a three kilo battery in your backpack. Uh, yeah, I mean, horses for courses, really. What type of trail do you ride? How much climbing did you do? Um, that depends if your loop's going back to the yeah. van as well, I think, yeah. as well. We've know. actually got a video coming up, which is a Summit to Sea video, which we did in Northern Italy, where we actually used three batteries. Um, yeah, three 500 watt hour batteries. <laughs> Big ride. So this one in from ARC1980. He's saying the internal tech system on the Focus is very good. Nice and light for messing around at the mountain bike parks. Add the external battery for the long distance, given a total of six, 760. 60 watt hours. Only downside with the system is the internal battery can't be removed. Not been a real big issue for me yet. So yeah, I think they were quite that, bang on, weren't they? First start with that. It was quite a good yeah, system. Yeah, totally. You know, we're talking about batteries here and what system. Now we're doing the Tour of Mont Blanc this week, and we've actually got to use three. Well, the, the amount of battery we've got is 2,100 watt hours. So that's either four 500 watt hour batteries or three 700 watt hour batteries. So we're going to be carrying. Uh, 700 watt hour batteries with us. We've got a lunch stop where we can swap one over, but ultimately we've got to carry one in the backpack. So we've got some pretty big backpacks. Big, long batteries, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, but they're also pretty big days out in the mountains, really. Yeah. Uh, Ian Richard says, I don't mind my battery in my backpack for long rides, but if I could mount it to the bike, I would. For bike park, it's perfect 500 watt hour, small mm. enough to be light, and then keep one in the van. <laughs> I think this is the type of philosophy a lot of people have got on, on uh, e-bike batteries, Chris. Definitely, yeah. It looks like they're doing the smaller rides, going back to the van, whipping mm. a new battery on and going for it again. Yeah, let us know your comments. Let us know, let's know what, uh, what batteries you prefer. And, uh, yeah, keep the discussion going on batteries on your e-man bikes. Okay, Steve, it's time for Where in the World, and we're coming quite close to home. We're in the UK. We are up in the Lake District. I've got the globe. This is him from Laurent. And Laurent? He's, he's out on his spectral on. He's up in Newby Bridge, up in the Lake District. Mm -hmm. Disappearing for an early morning ride before the kids wake up, before spending family time. Look at that. Yeah, you know all about that, Chris, don't you? I do, exactly that. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Ooh, oh, look at this. Uh, is that the white horse with a bit of a chin -hook action? It is. It's Chris on his spectral on again. He's up in Milk Hill in Wiltshire, so just down the road. Now, that is a, that's a very, very clever shot, that is, it's to cool, get all it? those elements in there. Yeah. The horse and the chin -hook and a bike. That's very, very difficult. I mean, that's genius. It's Absolute cool, genius. No, oh, look at this. This is from James. He's out in Sevilla's, yeah, in Switzerland. In Switzerland. Ah, we're going there this week, aren't we? Oh, the exact spot. Looking I don't think it's one. there, but uh, that's a beautiful, uh, beautiful spot for a. He's saying he's renting some bikes out when he's out there, and he couldn't resist. We brought one. We got home. James, are you riding with a white hat on? Or have you got a helmet on? It's a white hat. Mm. It's a nice, nice touch to keep the sun off. Lovely. Get up the channel this week on Friday. We've got Bish Bosh, how to make your first e mountain bike event uh, the best one you could ever be. And on Sunday, we've got Summit to See. Sounded pretty exciting, Steve. Exciting, epic, mm -hmm. uh, unforgettable, painful, mechanically difficult, technically difficult. Looking it had absolutely it. everything, and it's coming out on Sunday. Do not miss one. that one. Well, it's time to dive into the final part of the show. Um, a bit fatigued today on the Monday. Do you know we had a pigeon staying with us this weekend? Did you? Yeah, yeah. So managed to catch it finally. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm dive. I'm getting. Up. Let's get back into the bike vault. Okay, let's kick things off then. So this one's in from Randy. Check this one out. Randy on his Norco site out in the desert. Look That's that. a beautiful bike. That is. Look at the forks on there. That's a nice touch. I I'm thinking, if you don't mind, kick it off, Steve. Super Bang. nice. Whoa, look at this one in. Rocks. North, South, West, Australia. Mm -hmm. From Martin, I was Giant Sorry, Trance. New South Wales, Australia. <laughs> uh, yeah, Giant Trance E Plus Pro. Yeah. Ah. I love it. Um, 
I'm gonna go with the super nice again because those rocks to me are prime e bike territory. Well, I got this one in from uh, Reese as well. Cube yep. stereo, you know that is, didn't you? you know I that do. Is. I've ridden it there a few times. You've ridden that, yeah. Up on Mount Snowden. Yeah. Do you think it's nice? It's nice. It's nice. It's nice. Ooh, this is nice. Ooh. David Frey 160. Cape Town Winelands. Mm. Chris, seriously. Don't need to ask Steve, do you? Super nice. Lovely bit of wine well, down there. I think we've been there as well, haven't we? So this is in from Paul on his track Powerfly 7. Mm -hmm. The Bracken Beacons. Up uh, at Brunaman. Up at Brunaman. All right, okay. Looks cool, Steve. Yeah, that's my friend it's, lives around there. Kind of looks like a bit of a free ride zone. Why haven't we been there? Top Gear did uh, top to get, to get a BMW, BMW sure. test around there. Yeah. Did they? I recognise yeah, it. It's yeah. a cool spot. I'd like yeah, to go good there. Good spot. I'll take you right. I'll know exactly how to get there. Right, let's do that one. My, part, it's my part of the world. Super it's nice. Super nice. Yeah, from... Oh, what's a thock from Stephen in Alp Duez? It's nice as well, isn't it? It's, I mean, it's got to be super nice again, right? Right, dude. Give this the away. best ever. <sighs> Look at that as well. This is in from Adam with his pivot shuttle out in South Wales. Yeah, Go Go Goitre Reservoir. Mm -hmm. That's Demons. not Goitre Reservoir. Really? Looks like it. That's Goitre Reservoir. Apparently so. That's. I mean, there's a bit of a Welsh theme going on, you have to say, but... Mm, uh, it's a Welsh special for you. It's a Welsh special, it's getting a super nice... Look at that. Super nice. That's super nice as well. This is from Neil on his high bike Enduro. He's out in Torla. In Torla, I know Torla really, really well. So this is the Odessa Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, now that is one of the most... I mean, I've walked through there several times. I've walked through with my wife once, nearly got hit by rocks. Really? But uh, there's bears there. I'd love to go there. Who is this from? This is from... Neil. From Neil. Mm -hmm. Neil, we've got, we got a chat. We've seriously got a chat about this. This has got to be super nice, right? 100%. Oh my God, another one. Check this one out. <laughs> this is from Martin on his giant Fathom E Plus Pro. Oh dear. Marriott's Way up in Norwich. Yeah. Sunset Shop. Yeah. Nice bike. It's nice, nice shop. It's nice. It's, got, it's nice. Nice. It's nice. It's nice. You're not thinking super nice. It's nice. It? It's nice. Oh. Eve. And the next one's nice as well. This is from Lucas. Decoy from Lucas. Is that in Germany? Uh, yeah, in uh, Tech. It's nice. Just a bit of a funny angle going on there, isn't it? Yeah. Not quite. Uh, I want to see that bike again. And this is the final one from Maxim as well. Yeah. Turbo Levo out in Estonia. Look yeah. Where in Estonia though? Vimsy. 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 Riding in the rain. Chris Vimsy Smith. That has got to be a super nice trend. It. Nice moody oh. shot. Love seeing all your bikes here on the Bike Vault. Don't forget, if you want to get your bike involved in it, send us a link to the upload. That's on screen now. That's it, it's the end of the show. But if you guys want to stick around, we've done a really cool video on the future of e-mountain bike, and that one's over here. Yeah, and for some tech, have a look at Nico Vulio's prototype Lapier Overvolt, which we've shot in the south of France with all the seagulls. That's amazing. Seagale. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Drop some comments in the box below about your first e-mountain bike experience and all your buying, things mm -hmm. like that. Love to see that. Uh, and we'll see you next week, hopefully. Yeah, if we get back from the Tour Mont Blanc. Mm -hmm. It's touch and go.